This is a 51-year-old lady that presents with exertional dyspnea. She was found on transthoracic echocardiography to have a moderate to large secundum atrial septal defect. She underwent an MRI because the transthoracic echocardiogram uh, suggested elevated right heart pressures and was found to have a two-to-one shunt through the ASD. She's uh, therefore uh, come to the lab today for closure. Antigone, would you take us through the imaging? We start from zero degrees, always going systematically with um, a colour compare with the um, uh, looking, looking at the shunt across the defects and then sweeps from from posterior to the anterior part to make sure that we're not missing any additional defects all the way up to the pulmonary veins. We've done measurements already, um, but it's important that we make measurements every single uh, step, uh, always with the color on. And then 30 degrees, we start seeing the aortic rim there. There's a few millimeters continue to assess down to the um, uh, super inferior rims. Slightly thin inferior rim, but a good length of tissue. And then the superior rim is pretty good. And then again, measurements here. It's about 15. The maximum dimension we had approximately in the 40, 40, 50 degree view that was about 16 to 17. So approximately there. And then once we have a good feeling of, of the reams and the size of the defect, then it's good to, to see it on 3D. Like will give us a good idea of what, how the defect looks and confirm our the position that we think it is and, and the size. So it's an oval shaped Biggest dimension, that's the view from the left atrium with the pulmonary veins on top. Um, largest dimension is on the uh, AP orientation. And now we're going to move this around, look at it from the right atrium. SVC at the top, IVC at the bottom. Uh, it also comes here, and that's the defect. Largest dimension, about 16 to 17 by 12 millimeters. That's the catheter just approaching now. So nice size defect um, with good rims, slightly smaller towards the aorta, just uh, a little thin inferior rims. So we'll balloon size and just check that we get similar dimensions, um, but probably plan uh, on uh, placing a 37 if the balloon sizing concurs with that. I mentioned at the beginning of the case that the pulmonary pressures were elevated, uh, and you can see uh, the pulmonary artery pressure waveform here as a mean of 30, left atrial mean was 12. Uh, but there is a two-to-one shunt on MRI, so we will uh, proceed with uh, closure. So I've got a 34 millimeter AGA sizing balloon that we brought across the defect that you can see in position there. So if I now just put the balloon up until we stop flow, round about there. Yes, yep. just stopped. That okay. looks fantastic. Perfect. And if you could measure that for us. Excellent. That's yeah. very good. So 17 millimeters. So we're getting similar measurements uh, without the balloon as with the balloon. We still do uh, size defects for this device, really just to increase our confidence. But generally, we are finding that the measurements between the TOE without balloon sizing are very similar to what we're getting then on the sizing balloon. So if we can take a 37 millimeter device. So we have a 37 millimeter gore cardiform ASD occluder loaded monorail onto a 35 amplat super stiff positioned in the left upper pulmonary vein. And then if you follow my hands, we'll just flush as we go through. I've placed a 14 French sheath, so there's plenty of room. Yeah, and it flush now. That's grand. That's good. And then the device will come up over the wire on uh, fluoro, and then we'll also see it come into position on the TOB. So that's deep in the LA there on fluoro, so bring the wire out. 
So we're in the left pulmonary vein there, Antigone. Yes, I can see you. So I need to come back into the LA proper. You can see well on TOE, we're still in the pulmonary vein. And now I've come out of the pulmonary vein, it's, oh, it's still a little deep, coming back a little more. There, we're in LA there. That's it, yes. So now I can bring the end of the, the device to the tip of the sheath, which you can just see there. Just a millimetre back. I need to come further back into the left atrium. We're still too deep. Oh, and I'll then say I can that's it. Unsheath the device into position. So no need now for me to advance any further into the left atrium. Really keeping an eye on the TOE and just making sure I don't advance on the fluoro. Using the ribs and the spine on the fluoro as markers. I tend to do this quite slowly and I've just come to the hard stop now. So we're fully advanced and it can bring out the left disc. So the left disc will now begin to form. And if I then need to move further into the left atrium at this point, it's safe to do so. You can see the left disc forming nicely there, free of the appendage. That's good, it's nice and free. And then we come to a soft cue, which tells us that the left disc is fully formed. And then we can bring the device into the defect just until we see the left disc start to cup. Nicely against the septum now. So we can see there the, uh, the aortic uh, rim is nicely uh, opposed, but the uh, inferior uh, rim is not uh, well opposed. So we need to come back some more, a little more tension. You can see there that there's cupping now. So I can bring off the waist of the device, slowly enough so that Antigone can see and form the right disc and then push forward to release the tension on the septum. So the device is deployed. We'll now take our time over assessing it, both on fluoro and on imaging. Antigone, what do you think? It, it looks beautiful as, as the disc, the uh, right disc was deployed. I'm fairly confident that the discs are sitting well, but we're gonna start from zero degrees, add some color on. Have a shunt here. So far, it looks okay. It's uh, quite some tension. You see, it sitting at an angle with a with a septum. That's the inferior rim, which is the thinnest part. But again. Position looks good, and I haven't seen any shunt around the device. It's good to see inferiorly that there's separation of the left and the right disc there. You're showing that. And then you just about nicely. see the tissue there in between. It's sitting well, so I think we can lock now. Okay. So on fluoro, if we could just go iliocranial and zoom in, and we want to see that the discs are symmetrical, that there's no bunching of the wires, and that there's good separation between the left and the right disc. <laughs> So could you, if you could cone in there on the fluoro image, then we should be able to see that there's good separation both uh, superiorly and inferiorly, and the discs look symmetrical without overlap of the wires. So I'm comfortable locking the device now, and it will then uh, reorientate itself to the natural position of the septum. There, that's a nice Still Flora. change. So we can now reassess whether there's a residual shunt, whether there's separation, whether the discs are 
on the left and right as we expect. Starting from zero, no shunt. And systematically moving to 30, 45 degrees. You can see already the disc sitting on each side of the septum. Nice on the aortic rim, which was the yeah, shortest it's, it's, one. It's very, very good to aorta there. Very nice on the inferior rim. No shunt. This is a very, very nicely seated device. We can finish by final confirmation here, but we already know how it will look. So that's the left disc, view from the left atrium. So we can see all six petals uh, nicely up on the left side. And as, as we move around again, SVC is at the top of the screen, aorta to the right, and the device nicely on the right atrial side. Much more difficult to see the right disc, of course. Uh, and so it's important that we get a good view of the right disc during deployment because it is, it is harder at this point. And so uh, if we now look on uh, Fluoro, if I acquire an image, we can see the left islet and the right islet and a, uh, a wire in between. Sometimes it's very difficult to discern the locking loop, but I can also see the locking loop there. When you see the device during the cardiac cycle, you can see inferior and superiorly at, at that point in the cycle that there is separation. And we can see well on TOE that there is a good separation with no residual shunt. So we're comfortable releasing this device. OK, I'm releasing it now. Yep. And that's the device released, Antigone. That's nice. Same routine, 0 to 30 to 45 to 90 again, as we're washing the, the device there. Keep the colour on, make sure that we don't see any new shunts, anything that is around the defect. There is the aortic rim nicely hugged by the discs. Same on 70, we're just approaching to that inferior rim, which is thin but nicely covered. And then final check. Again, the six petals on the left side, LA disc. And then view from the right atrium, it is quite a nice view, actually, the whole disc on the right side. So a very nice result. It is. It's very low profile. I'm pleased with it. I think the device size choice was good, and I think the final appearances are, are excellent.